If you think that your first role in tech or very early on, you're gonna land a solutions architect role, you're probably mistaken. I'm gonna instead talk about a realistic roadmap starting with your core skills, more advanced skills. We'll talk through certifications, coding, how to actually showcase your skills and stand out to recruiters. But it's not gonna be one of those videos where you have no experience and you land a job in 30 days. It's just not realistic. Let's just cut that out because every comment section you see of one of those videos, everyone's like, I did this and I didn't land a job. So let's just get straight into the video. Firstly, we need to address what does a solutions architect actually do? Now you should know right off the bat that there's actually four types of solutions architects. There's pre-sale solutions architects and they're essentially the ones who help customers understand the technical solution before they buy it. Those people typically work really close with an account exec or a salesperson to try and close that deal. Once they've closed that deal, there's typically post-sales solutions architects. These are people who design and implement the system them after it's purchased. So they're basically like, oh, we've sold it, so now how do we actually implement it? And then there's internal enterprise solutions architects. These are people who design architectures within their own organization and it's typically associated with bigger Fortune 500 companies or larger companies. And they're essentially trying to build smarter across their whole company. And then lastly, there's technical or specialist solutions architects. As the name kind of suggests, they focus on one specific area like security or data or AI and machine learning. Now, at the end of the day, all solutions architects have one core skill which is basically problem solving. They bridge the gap between what the business needs and what the tech can actually do. They pick the right services, connecting them all together to make sure that it is secure, stable, efficient, cost effective. I was talking to the solutions architect the other day and he puts it like this. He said, we're basically trusted technical advisors. We essentially just help customers build better solutions in the cloud which is kind of simple, right? So now that we understand the different types of solutions architects, let's touch on one of the big questions. And that is, can I break into this field without any prior experience? So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Look, I'm just gonna be straight up with you. You're not gonna land a solutions architect role as your first role in tech or even early on. It's very, very unlikely. Again, that solutions architect I spoke to the other day said this. The overwhelming majority of solutions architects today are professionals who started as engineers or developers and then eventually later in their career, at a more senior level, they would become a solutions architect. That said, there are junior solutions architect roles that can be a good entry point into this career path. But as with most roles in tech, especially higher paying ones, you gotta start somewhere. And that's why I'd recommend starting with these entry level roles that I'll put on screen now. They can be a good foot in the door and help you develop the skills necessary to land a solutions architect role. But if you've been applying for jobs at the moment, you would know that these entry level roles are difficult to get. And I don't know about you, but they don't actually feel entry level anymore. They all want experience. And that leads us into our next section where you need to build these core skills. So now really to build these core skills that are gonna help you with most roles in tech, there are five core ones that you need to look at. There's networking, security, storage, databases, and solutions design. Now I'll quickly touch on each of these, but I'll also show you a way at the end to learn all of these skills with hands-on projects, which in my opinion is the best way to learn. All right, the first skill is network. This can be a tough entry point, but is honestly fundamental in so many areas across tech and particularly solutions architects. And understanding the basics of networking how data moves from service to service is absolutely critical. You need to learn about VPCs or subnets or routing, security groups, load balancing. This is the backbone of all AWS architecture. And to me, it's a great starting point because once you understand this backbone, the rest becomes a lot easier. And just quickly before we get into the next section, if you're enjoying the video or you've learned something, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel do better. And yeah, it also makes me feel good. So that always helps. Next thing you need to learn is security. Now every solutions architect needs to understand IAM, encryption, compliance, and security best practices. Without this, you're basically building a house of cards that is just primed to be attacked. Then you also need to learn storage. And storage is about knowing all of the options. So S3 for object storage, EBS for block storage, and EFS for file system. And you also need to know when to use each one. It's important to understand the services, but also understand the context around them. Because you need to understand storage as that decision is gonna impact performance, scalability, and cost. It's absolutely crucial in my opinion. Next up is databases. This means understanding when to use RDS, so relational databases, versus DynamoDB, which is NoSQL, or ElastiCache, and other database systems. Database choices can make or break your architecture. And then lastly, solutions design. This is where it all comes together. This is about designing high availability, fault tolerant, scalable systems that truly work in the business environment. And as I said at the start of this section, I wouldn't recommend learning the traditional route, which is either buying a course or watching YouTube videos, basically learning all the theory first. In my opinion, the best way to learn is with project-based learning. And it, the world is changing so fast and it feels like every week there's a new tool or service that you should be using and trialing out. So it makes sense to learn the theory and the hands-on practical implementation all in one. And of course I'm biased, but I would recommend checking out our projects. You can literally learn networking, security, databases, storage, all of the above 
to learn these core skills and showcase them to recruiters. The cool thing with our projects is they're beginner friendly, they're step-by-step -step guides, you don't have to have any experience. And as you go and do the project, not only do you learn the theory, you learn how to actually apply it. And while you're going through, you fill in these boxes, add in screenshots, and at the end, you will get automatic documentation that you can then share to LinkedIn, you can add to your own project portfolio hosted on our website, but I would recommend getting started and you can get most of our projects for free. And another thing that people ask me is, do I need coding experience? And that's a good question. That solutions architect I was talking to, he said, the short answer is no, you don't really need to know how to code to learn AWS and become a solutions architect. But naturally having coding experience is gonna make you a better solutions architect. Python is typically the go-to language for AWS automation. YAML or JSON, you need these for cloud formation templates. Bash is great for simple scripting to automate repetitive tasks. And SQL is naturally needed for databases and querying. So you're not trying to become a full stack developer, but understanding enough code to basically implement your infrastructure components or speak credibly with development teams is going to be quite important in my opinion. It certainly doesn't hurt to develop coding skills and at the moment with AI it is faster than ever to be able to pick up a coding language. So once you've kind of finished this first chapter what do you do next? And once you've built these core skills make sure you're applying for jobs at this point not necessarily a solutions architect job but entry-level roles things that are going to be able to get your foot in the door into the industry so that later on when we cover the next section you'll be able to leverage your skills plus your experience to land that next step in your journey, which may be a solutions architect role. Now let's talk about some advanced skills that you could be learning after you've implemented those core skills and started applying for roles. Now the first of which is cost optimization. And the truth is that businesses don't have unlimited budget. As a solutions architect, you need to know how to analyze and reduce AWS spending while maintaining performance. This means understanding reserved instances, savings plans, and right-sizing resources. Something else you need to cover is migration strategies. Most businesses you work with already have existing systems. And that means you need to know the six R's of migration being rehost, replatform, repurchase, refactor, retire, and retain. And you need to know when to use each one. And then one of my favorites is containerization. This is learning tools like Docker and Kubernetes, which are changing the way that applications are deployed. Learn things like ECS, BKS, Bargate, things that are gonna help you to containerize applications effectively. Check out our Docker projects and our Kubernetes projects to get more info on that. I'll leave a link to all of these projects in the description below. Then I'd recommend learning about serverless architecture. Building with Lambda, API gateways, and other serverless services can help drastically bring down costs. And this is becoming a must have skill in my opinion. Here's some good projects I'd recommend for that. Next up is infrastructure as code because no one at the moment is building manually anymore. Everyone's automating it and it makes sense. It saves a lot of time compared to just clicking in the console. Learn cloud CloudFormation or Terraform to automate deployments and ensure consistency. And then again, just like infrastructure as code, DevOps is becoming more and more important. And understanding CI CD pipelines and how they integrate with tools like GitHub Actions, Jenkins, or Code Pipeline is becoming more and more essential for modern architectures. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but I'd 100% recommending our seven day DevOps challenge. It is built for beginners and you can do majority of the projects completely for free. You'll be taken through step-by-step -step how to actually build a CI CD pipeline from scratch, which is gonna help you stand out to recruiters. And I know what everyone's thinking, what about certifications? That's what you hear from all of the other YouTubers or people on TikTok certification certification certifications here's my opinion on certification now certifications can be valuable in my opinion it's kind of like a supplementary degree nowadays but as we've seen with the job market having a degree anymore having a certification doesn't mean you will get a job it certainly can help but it's not going to guarantee you a job my recommendation is always build hands-on projects get hands-on experience rather than prioritizing certifications as that's going to help you stand out to recruiters. Recruiters don't want to see that you've got a cert, they want to see the actual skills that you have. When you look at job descriptions, they're often nice to have, but they're not 100% necessary. Now in saying that, if you're going for a solutions architect role, getting the solutions architect associate certification can be useful in the long run. The solutions architect professional cert can also be useful. From speaking to people in the industry, that cert has a lot more weight than just doing the cloud practitioner but is a good intermediary cert compared to doing the Solutions Architect Professional. Remember that employers care more about what you can do and how you can show that rather than a cert that's hanging up on your wall. So now if you've made it to this point of the roadmap, which a lot of people have already quit by now, then how do you actually land the role? Number one sounds so simple, but it's start where you currently are. So hopefully by this point, you've either landed an entry-level role or maybe a mid-level role, it's time to leverage that. Within your company, is there anyone who can mentor you? Within your company, is there any other projects that you can work on? Is there anything that you can leverage to build more skills that are gonna help you land the solutions architect role? Often it is as simple as having a conversation with people within your organization that can potentially help you, and it's overlooked a lot. Build relationships with solutions architect within your company. 
It sounds simple, but people don't do it. Try and seek some shadowing opportunities where you can work beside them or you can shadow them in meetings. And that's gonna help you develop the skill set and also be recognized by people within your company. Now, something I talked about earlier on is documenting your work and sharing your work. Now, even if you're not using our website and you wanna do this manually, I'd recommend documenting every project that you do so that you will be able to stand out and showcase your work to recruiters. Now on our website, as you do the project, you fill in the prompts, you add in the screenshots, and then at the end, it's automatically generated for you. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can share this to LinkedIn and recruiters are gonna be able to see your work. Other people are gonna be able to see your work and it's gonna be their starting point for forming relationships. I have literally seen this with people in our community. I was talking to a student last week in our community who's been posting his work consistently on LinkedIn and a recruiter saw his work, commented on it, and reached out to him saying, hey, I really like what you're doing. Here's a certification voucher that this recruiter had been given by another company. And he said, I'll pay for your entire certification. How cool is that? Literally by posting your work, you can get noticed by recruiters. You also get noticed by other people in the industry. Now those people who are posting their projects, they often get asked questions on how did you do this? Or what was, your, what was the hardest part of this project? Now you can actually start to form some relationships, start answering questions, which is gonna help you in your learning process as well. Being a solutions architect means that you need to be able to communicate what you're doing, not only to technical people, but to non-technical people as well. And this is gonna help you. And this kind of flows into the next point here, which is network. I personally hate this word networking because it feels really transactional. I'll do this for you if you do this for me. Now that's not how networking works. Real networking is just building relationships. It's about taking a real interest in the other person and what they're doing. And who knows, maybe at a later point, they'll be able to help you out. They'll be able to reference you for a job or they'll be able to show you or point you in the direction of resources that might help you. Real networking is just building relationships. So when you see people posting on LinkedIn, don't just click the auto reply comment, great work, inspirational. Everyone knows that's just the AI written comment actually put the time into responding and, and give value where you can. This is exactly how it is in our community. When people join, they're so shocked that people are actually responding or asking questions or troubleshooting or giving advice because we've created a community where we're deliberately teaching these skills, where we want people to interact with other people. We want people to build the soft skills necessary to land some of these roles like a solutions architect. Honestly, a good rule of thumb is just be a good human. Put actual time into your responses and engage with others and it's gonna go a long way. One thing I wanna say is whether you're commenting on LinkedIn posts or you're sharing in communities or Reddits, is that the most successful networkers give value before they ask for anything. So you may be thinking, I have no value to give. Sharing your work is valuable. Sharing your questions is valuable because it gives other people the opportunity to either learn or implement some of the skills that they've developed. As you do this, you will be influencing your own personal brand. You'll be building a personal brand that's gonna help you land a job in the future. And as you do this, and as you build stronger relationships, asking for referrals for jobs is gonna become a lot easier because now you have a wide network of people that have been following along on your journey, have either gotten value for you or you've built a relationship. So when you ask for a referral for a job, they're more likely to actually say yes. And don't be afraid to ask because often the people who do successfully refer someone get paid a monetary bonus. So it's actually working in their best favor as well if you get their job and you do really well. And there's a couple additional things that I wanna to touch on is that when you're applying for jobs, don't be afraid to apply for jobs that you don't necessarily have all of the qualifications or skills. You never know what will happen. There's no harm in applying, but make sure you go out of your way to talk to recruiters or talk to other people within the company build those relationships so that you stand out more. And before you wrap up, this is not a sprint. As I said at the start, this is not a 30 day roadmap. It takes time to become a solutions architect. It takes experience and it takes hard work and dedication, which I have no doubt if you've watched the video until here, you can do it. I believe you can. And I am here to support you. Any questions that you have, let me know in the comments. I'll try my best to get back to them. I wanna see you succeed, but the key is to be patient and consistent. Those who show up every single day, those who are posting their projects, those who are learning practical skills to actually land jobs, are gonna be the ones that become solutions architects and land these high paying roles. And if you show up every single day, you'll be ahead of 99% of the competition. And, and as always, if you've learned something new, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps our channel out and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.